Greetings, YouTubians, and welcome back to Wayne Sharp World, where today we're going to be taking a look at the PMP Revenge 2. Now, before I go any further into this review, I'd like to thank you guys for tuning in today. If you like what you see, please do me a huge favor. Hit that subscribe button, follow along, and I will continue to bring you the content. I also want to let you guys know that today, this episode is sponsored by White Mountain Knives. Check them out for all of your knife and EDC needs. And if you find something on their website you want, use this code right here, WSW10, for 10% off your order. Now, let's get into this knife right here. We got ourselves a bruiser, guys. It is a big boy. Let's take a look at some overall specs here. We have an overall length of 8.86 inches with a blade length coming in at 3.74 inches, a blade width of 1.3 inches with a blade thickness at 0.138 inches. Blade material on this guy is M390 with a drop point style blade, a flat grind, a handle length of 5.12 inches with a handle thickness of 0.52 inches. Handle width on this guy is 0.99 inches with a handle material of titanium with a frame lock, a user of a right hand tip up only carry, a weight coming in at 6.5 ounces and a price of $260. Now let's do some size comparisons because you, you, you got to see it with some other big boys to really get a feel at just how big this knife is. Let's start off with the Microtech Stitch which is a very big boy, a, a, a bad, a big, bad, ornery boy is what the stitch is. It's a little hellion. And let's also compare it with the Spider Co. Shaman. And look at this. You see how it dwarfs the Shaman? Yeah, that's a big knife. That's definitely a big knife. And we have two more to compare it to. Let's bring some Demcos to the stage because that's never a bad idea. Let's go with the Demco 8020 as well as the Cold Steel 8010. And as you can see, again, measures up very well with these knives. The 8020 is just a, actually, it's really about the same length, in all honesty. Yeah, maybe I, the, the the Revenge 2 may be just a hair longer, but uh, pretty good size comparisons right there with these two Demco designs. Now let's get to talking about this knife because it is a beast, an absolute beast. We have a big bruising blade with a, a pretty good edge actually coming in at 16 thousandths. Although due to this uh, somewhat shallow flat grind here, it only comes up about you know halfway up the blade as you guys can see. The cutting geometry isn't exactly ideal, doesn't really make for a great slicer, but it does make for a very powerful cutter that can take a decent amount of abuse and uh, carry on pretty darn well. The tip on this guy is also very nice and strong. It uh, has a wide base leading up to the tip, and as you can see, it's, it's, it's not too thin, thin enough to actually be a little slicey. The tip itself uh, can slice through stuff pretty well, but once you get, you know, past probably this right here, you uh, you get into to more thickness and width that, that doesn't exactly, like I said, make for a slicing blade. Now, I do like the jimping on this spine, though. This jimping is very functional, works very well, and when you get this guy in hand, it just, it really melts. It really melts in your hand, and you get that good traction with the jimping that uh, makes it able to uh, to carry on some pretty good work. And while I got this guy in my hand right here, let me just tell you, the ergos are fantastic. The handle is very solid all around. You have a nice wide handle. Would work well for someone with gloves, but also just feels good in a bare hand, as I have it right here. It, it really does have some pretty hand-hugging ergos. Uh, but it, for such a big knife, it still has somewhat of, of a thin handle. I guess for as wide as it is, the 0.52 doesn't really feel that thick. Feels really, really good. Milling all over the handle is fantastic. Really precise milling. Um, it, it doesn't have, sometimes it's hard to explain. Sometimes you'll see milling on stuff to where it just looks a little dull, like not very crisp. This is an excellent job of milling all over from the clip to the handle on both sides looks really really good the lockup is extremely solid and built well with a lock bar insert and over travel stop as you guys can see there definitely a knife that can take a good amount of abuse and a clip that is pretty 
nice on this guy. I it, there's the only drawback to it, which isn't a drawback for everybody, but I think it is for majority of people, is that this guy is going to ride a little higher in the pocket, as you can see. The clip stops here. So you're going to have about that much sticking out of your pocket. So what that does, as I've said before, it, it gives you a good amount to, to pull the knife out of your pocket. But again, just keep in mind, you're going to have a lot of knife sticking out of the pocket there. So again, it's a, it's, it's, it's a double-edged sword. Um, as for the actual clip itself, it goes in and out of the pocket fine as long as you don't have thick, thick uh, pocket hems. If you have thick pocket hems, you may have to pay a little attention because that may pose a problem. Um, yeah, as for the lock bar access design, really, really good. I like it. It's uh, It feels good. It doesn't wear on the finger or the thumb. However, you whatever finger you use, I'm assuming most of you are going to use the thumb. So you just press it and it, it definitely, it's definitely a blade that, uh, that falls shut for the most part. Very, very smooth. Um, going into the action, if I have one quarrel with the action, it, it's the fact that the detent isn't very strong. Pretty light detent. Um, so when you have a, a bigger, heavier blade, a light detent can cause some problems. But I will say, when you're actually just standing up and you pull it out of your pocket and you go to flip the blade, you know, usually the, you know, it's facing down or it's not facing up. Right now, I'm talking about this knife and holding it up which as you can see, you light switch it and it still comes out fine. But when you can't just, it, it's kind of hard to push button it right now because the blade is facing up, it's a heavy blade, but that's not gonna be the the position you're in when you're going to use this knife. You're gonna have it downward an angle like this and you're gonna flip it, it's gonna fly out and you can also, you can push button it and it comes out fine there too. So kind of deceiving when you're watching the review of something. Um, a crisper detent would take care of that, or a, a, a stronger detent, I guess. But it, it just doesn't have that, and this is what it is. But for what you get, you get a very solid knife. And the action is still very smooth. Very smooth action. Blade centering is perfect. And I, it, it just, between the backspacer insert here and the way that blade is centered up, you just have a very premium feeling knife. And I mean, you should for $260, you absolutely should. Um, but it's still nice to say that because sometimes that's not the case. Sometimes knives are expensive and they don't feel premium and that always sucks. This one doesn't. This one feels pretty good. Blade falls shut. I could sit here and fidget with this flipper for uh, quite a while without getting tired of it because it is just a, just a very, very smooth action. Overall thoughts on this guy are pretty good. Um, there are some things I would like to change. I would definitely like a, a higher grind on the blade. Um, as far as the ergos and handle though, I don't really have any issue with this whatsoever. I think it looks good. I love the all titanium look. Uh, the clip is nice. It works fine for me. Like I said, some people would probably have a problem with it. Um, but I don't really have much of an issue with it. It, uh, has a nice secure bite on the pocket. So you don't have to worry about falling out of your pocket. And you got that premium steel of M390. Um, yeah, not a lot I would change on this, in all honesty. I do like it. I, I think just a better grind and a stronger detent would make this a very, very popular seller. I think even as is, I think a lot of people are gonna w would like this knife and I think really appreciate it, especially if you like a bigger knife. It's one you really need to take a look at. Let me know what you guys think. Have you ever held a, a PMP knife or had any experience with it? I've seen there's some other ones available on White Mountain uh, Knives site. Haven't ever had those ones in hands. It's starting to get pretty interested in the brand. So I'd appreciate your thoughts and comments on this. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. Hope you have a great rest of your day. And until the next one, I'm out.